in the stillness of the desert, where the horizon melts into a blur of sand and sky, my sanctuary lies hidden from the world's prying eyes. This journal, bound in worn leather, serves as the sole confidant to my dual existence. Within these pages, I chronicle the silent symphony of my life, a life far removed from the neon chaos that pulsates just beyond the mountains that cradle my home. Here, off-grid outside Las Vegas, I have crafted a realm of tranquility. My modest dwelling, a simple structure of wood and glass, stands resilient against the relentless desert winds. Solar panels, and a rainwater catchment system provide what little I need to survive. The land around is barren, yet it thrives with a stark beauty that few can appreciate. Cacti and hardy brush dot the landscape, their resilience a mirror to my own. Each morning I rise with the sun, its rays casting long shadows that retreat slowly over the sandy expanse. My days are marked not by the ticking of a clock, but by the movement of the sun and the rhythm of my chores. There's a peace here, profound and pervasive, that soothes the restlessness that once tormented my soul. But as night descends and the stars claim the sky, a different call stirs within me, a darker allure. The city, with its endless temptations, beckons. The strip, a glittering mirage, promises anonymity amongst the throngs of revelers. There, among the flashing lights and fleeting hopes, I find my purpose. Tonight, like many before, I will drive down from my desert haven into the heart of Las Vegas. I will walk among the crowds, invisible yet observant, selecting with an artist's eye. My needs are particular, my methods meticulous. This journal holds the secrets of my nights, the essence of my true self that the daylight obscures. Here, I am no mere spectator of life, but an orchestrator of death, crafting each act with the precision of a master and the discretion of the shadows that dance at the edge of the desert sun. In this undisturbed wilderness, I am as much a part of the landscape as the ancient boulders and twisted junipers. My home, built from the earth itself, stands as a monument to solitude. Solar panels gleam under the harsh sun, powering the few modern conveniences I indulge in. Days are spent tending to my vegetable patch, reading volumes of forgotten lore, and walking the paths worn by my own boots over the years. Yet, as the city's lights flicker to life in the distance, so too does the other side of my nature. The scent of money and desperation hangs heavy in the air as I step into the casino. The chime of slot machines and the murmur of hopeful conversations create a symphony of human desire. I blend in, another face among many, my eyes scanning for someone lost enough in their revelry to stray from safety. Tonight, it's a young woman, her laughter a bit too loud, her steps uncertain with drink. She's perfect separated from her friends, and ripe for the taking. I remember her face, not for its beauty, but for the way her eyes widened when she realized her fate. It wasn't in a dark alley or some grimy back room. It was in her hotel suite, where she thought she was safe. The act was swift, precision born of necessity. I left her with a joker card placed upon her chest, a grim marker of her unfortunate luck. It's my signature, a whimsical touch to the grim finality of death. Sometimes in the quiet hours of dawn, I ponder the winding path that led me here. There was a time when I was like them, blissfully ignorant, fully engaged in the frivolous dramas of life. But betrayal, a lover's deceit, and a friend's back turn shattered my trust and reshaped my world. Now. I trust only the desert, my solitude, and the thrill of the hunt. Tonight, it is a magician's assistant who catches my eye. She is graceful, moving with an air of distraction, perhaps burdened by secrets of her own. After her show, 
I follow her to a quiet bar, striking up a conversation about illusions and reality. She is fascinated, or perhaps just polite. When I offer a nightcap at her place, she hesitates, then agrees. The pattern repeats, the drink, the conversation, the sudden sharp descent into silence. Another joker card is left behind. Lately, I've noticed a shift. There are glances that linger too long, whispers that quiet when I approach. The authorities are becoming more adept, or perhaps I am growing careless. My entries are now filled with strategies and contingencies. I need to be smarter, more cautious. The game is evolving, and so must I. The desert, once my refuge, now feels like a prison. I see dust clouds and wonder if they conceal FBI agents. Every hiker or tourist could be undercover, every new face a potential threat. I write less frequently fearing my words might one day condemn me. At a poker table, a man with sharp eyes and a sharper suit watches me too intently. He's not here to play. I fold my hand and leave, taking a circuitous route back to my car, watching for tales. It's a close escape, one that leaves my heart pounding not with exhilaration, but fear. I plan one last spectacle, a grand finale to end my nocturnal escapades. It will be at the grandest casino during the busiest night of the year. My target is high profile, the risk immense, but it will be my masterpiece, my legacy. The day is here. I am meticulous in my planning, leaving nothing to chance. Disguises, escape routes, timing, everything is calculated with the precision of a chess master making the final winning moves. The kill is poetic performed under the cover of fireworks and cheers. But as I make my escape, a misstep, a witness, not accounted for, screams. Chaos erupts and I run, wounded in the ensuing melee. In a small, abandoned shack, I write this last entry with trembling hands. The police sirens wail like mournful ghosts in the distance. I reflect on my journey, the lives taken, the artistry of my work. I leave my journal here, under a loose floorboard, a testament to the man who walked between worlds, the glittering lights of Vegas, and the profound silence of the desert. Months later, a detective, haunted by the case, stumbles upon my hiding place. My journal, filled with confessions and philosophical musings, offers a glimpse into the mind of Las Vegas's most elusive killer. As he reads, the desert winds whisper through the shack, carrying away the last secrets of a shadow who danced so dangerously close to the lights.